This video is going to be for anybody who's still in college and wants to be a data analyst and you're kind of looking for a roadmap on how to get there. I think I'm qualified to talk on this because I just recently graduated from college and started a data analyst job. I think it would be most beneficial for you if I started from really the beginning of the data analyst journey. So my data analyst journey kind of started out when I was a junior in college. Going into the summer after my junior year, I realized that I was really, really going to need some kind of experience. Up to that point, I've only worked at like a pizza shop. I've worked at Lowe's. I've done a bunch of random stuff. I did roofing, but I needed some real experience to get out there in the job world. And that first opportunity actually came by chance. So this is the first point for you. Try to put yourself in situations where you can get these opportunities. So for me, that was being in the math group at a branch campus of the college I went to previously. I received an email from the math club because they never took me off the list. But anyways, the email I got said, we're looking for somebody with statistics or coding or programming experience, whatever, for an engineering role over the summer through the college. So I'm like, this is perfect for me. But when I talked to the professor who was running this research program, he kind of laid out what we were going to be doing. They needed somebody with analytical experience and me being a statistics major, I had quite a bit of analytical experience under my belt. Now I wouldn't say I was a master by any means, but I will say that I had enough to talk my way through the interview. They were looking for somebody who knew Python, which I had very little knowledge of, which I kind of explained to the professor, but he was completely okay with it that I had seen it and I have done other things in similar languages like R. And so just by putting myself in that situation where I was in this group, I could receive opportunities like this. So I just saw that email and I immediately applied and the turnaround was actually really quick. So it wasn't like I was actively going out and looking for roles, which I was, but this one kind of just fell into my lap. So make sure you put yourself in situations where you can get these kinds of opportunities. But that research position was valuable for a couple of reasons. One, it kind of taught me a little bit on what you would actually be doing in a real analytical role. And when people tell you that cleaning data is going to be 90% of your job for a data analyst or data scientist, take that to heart because it's really the truth. But anyways, a lot of this time was spent cleaning data off of manufacturing machines, which is absolutely disgusting. The data was not formatted correctly in any way. Sometimes it was just flat out wrong and the readings were wrong and you had to fix that and talk to the manufacturer and figure out actually what was going on. So that was valuable because that's going to be, like I said, 80 to 90% of your role when you're a data analyst. And then the second part of it is I was working with a computer science student on the project and he was using a lot of machine learning techniques. So that was something that I could also leverage. This not only introduced me to machine learning, but it also gave me a sense of what was actually going on behind the scenes in practice when you're using it. So these were two important things that I could talk about now on an interview. And the nice thing about this research position is it was an ongoing one. They wanted to continue it. They liked where it was going. So I did that for an entire year almost, that research position. And then when it was coming to summertime, offered me to stay again over the next summer. But I wanted something, you know, in industry. Now the research position was great. I was working with a real company. And even though I was working for the school, I was still doing real work in my opinion. But I really wanted to put on my resume that I work for, you know, a quote unquote real company. I told the professor this, I might come back, but I'm really looking for something in an industry. And he was all for it. He said, that's a great idea because it's going to make you more attractive to employers, which is ultimately what you want out of college. At least that's what you should want if you don't want to waste your money. And so I applied to about 100 to 150 different positions, most of them internships, some of them co-ops. But I was really just putting my name out there and trying to get as many applications as I could out so I could get a few calls and get a few interviews. So unluckily or luckily enough, however you want to look at it for me, I only got a few calls back. One of them was just an absolute dud. I didn't even like the company. The interviewer was late. That was annoying. But that's fine. I don't want a position like that where the employer is not going to respect my time. But luckily for me, there was a company, a local company. I got an interview and I kind of did really well. I had a few different interviews for different positions in this company, but this one went the best and I ended up getting an offer. But that's not the one I took. The one I took was for a different company, a bigger company out of a different city, but it was all going to be remote. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I can take the one that's local and I'd have to go there and I'd probably, if I end up getting a job, I'll probably end up working there forever. Or I can take a chance on this other company that I've heard of. I know it's a big company. And if I get a job there, I'd probably get paid more. I would probably have more opportunities open up to me in the future. And I think the opportunity for growth at this company is just way better. But the thing was the pay is the same. so why not take the risk, right? And at that point, I thought of it as a risk, but really it was the best decision I could have made. So I take this position going into my last semester of college, which was just ended in December. I'm going into this internship and I'm thinking, well, okay. So I don't know exactly what I'm getting into, but this interview for this position, they asked me so much about R, which was super exciting to me. And that was part of the reason why I wanted to take this role because I'm thinking, well, if they're asking me all these questions about R and why I'm using it and how I'm using it, they probably want me to use it, right? 
And I'm very comfortable in R, and that's all I used in statistics, really, my entire time in school. So I'm thinking, you know what, this might be the right position for me. And that was something they were looking for, too. So they also liked me as a fit for the position. And thank God for them, the two managers, they were awesome. Um, and I still talk to them today because, well, I work there now. But I leveraged so heavily on that research position, talking about R and school, and then also how I used Python and all these other programs as my in my research position in the previous role at the college I went to. So they really liked the interview and I think it went well and they ended up giving me an offer. So I interned there over the summer and I'm going into it thinking, okay, I really want to, you know, impress my employers. I think I would like it here. I want to go into it with an open mind because I, I didn't know much about this company. I've just heard of it before because it was so big. Going into any internship, you really want to make a good impact. I don't think all college students go into it with the same mindset, but that is one of the most important ways that you can get a job, especially if you want to stay at the company that you're interning at. So I go into this and it was nice because it was a different kind of role. It wasn't really an analytical type of role. It was more of a testing role. So I'm testing R, I'm testing all these different programs for this company, making sure they're well documented so people who want to use them know how to use them. If they run into any trouble, they know how to fix it. And if not, they call our team for some help. That was interesting in its own right because I got to use all these different programs that I had never had access to before and some that I had never even heard of. And through this testing, I gained a lot of experience in analytical work because some of them were analytics-based tools. I learned a lot about databases because there were some database-oriented tools. So, you know, getting data to flow from one part of the company to the other and having it in data lakes and being able to pull from there and how to pull in these different programs, that was super valuable because if you think about it, that's what you're doing as a data analyst or data scientist anyways. So as I go through this internship, I'm doing pretty well and I think my managers were really liking the work that I would do and they wanted to keep me there but they knew that I was more of an analytics focused person and that's kind of what I wanted to do. Luckily for me those managers helped me like look for other positions in the company once my internship was going to be up. And so when I interviewed for some of these analytical positions that I was applying for I was able to leverage not only the research position prior where I was doing real analytical work for a company in Python I was also able to leverage all my knowledge in R that I learned in school. And I was also able to leverage all these other tools that I learned in the software testing internship I did. So that was three tools that I was able to talk about in my internship that I have done. And it also shows that I'm fairly capable at learning new languages and new techniques pretty quickly. So in the end, I get this analytical role and I love it. And I was able to leverage all these little things that I had done in the past to gain myself experience and kind of cut my teeth on these new analytical tools and all these different programs. And if you made it this far in this video, I think you'll also really enjoy this one. So go ahead, watch this one next, and I'll see you there.